Download Squad, Christina Warren here, and we are with Kevin Marks from Google, and um, talking about open social, and um, actually today, um, Google announced that they are going to be having Google I.O. at um, Moscone in San Francisco on Mar May 28th and 29th, and it's going to be a big conference for all the different Google APIs, open social, maps, search, AdSense, AdWords, um, so search Google to find out more of the details, and if you're interested in any of the Google uh, developing projects, you know, this would be an event you would want to check out. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit about Open Social. So Open Social is our way of making the web better by making it more social, by creating a common set of APIs so that developers can have access to profile information and um, friend relationships um, that have already been established. So the way to think about it is um, instead of writing um, site registration code, which nobody wants to do, right. it's like, you know, it's something you have to do for users. And instead of trying to get all the users to come to your site, you separate your application out into um, the core of the application that wants to know about the user and the user's friends, and you take that to the social network sites that already exist. OK, so you basically go to a site and plug in your information. It can find out, OK, you have friends here, you have friends here, and we can try to see if we can link this up together? No, it's not, that, that's not, it's not really that approach. It's, okay. it's the other way around. It's, it's the other way around. It's okay. more like you wrap your application up. It runs inside MySpace or Orkut or High Five, um, and it, uh, it asks the site, who's the user, who are the user's friends, and uses that information to adjust what you see to the user. OK, I gotcha. OK, cool. Right. So basically, you go Want, once you log into a site, it automatically knows all the information That's about right. where you are. Okay, yeah. cool. And um, you know, it's a new developer platform, so developers are now able to you know try to build some of their applications around it to use it. What can you tell us about that? Um, well, we've got three these three large sites that are launching over the next month, which is Orca, um, High Five, and, and MySpace. Between them, they've got hundreds of millions of users. Right. Um, so this is a huge opportunity for developers to build applications that run within those sites. So. Um, the other thing is that because um, we're storing information associated with the users on the social networking site, you don't necessarily have to set up large numbers of servers yourself. You can experiment with this, have it run within the site, okay. um, and then later on, if you want to call out to your own servers, you can do that. You can do that too. But it means that you get the advantage of being able to scale your application um, quickly without having to call up data centers and deploy new servers all the time. There's some, there's some added value there. So you can basically work, focus on the application rather than having to deal with the scalability side of just managing the users. Right. So the whole goal is, is to lower the barriers to entry for writing social applications to make sure that um, every application can be a social application. Because almost everything gets better when you add with friends on the end. So I, I want to choose a book to read with friends. Um, by looking at the books that your friends are reading, you can say, oh, my friends are recommending that one. That's interesting. They, they just read that, and I, I, know, I trust their taste on that subject. I will read that book. Um, in, in that kind of way, you're using your friends as, as media to, to mediate what you're, what you're looking at at the web. So instead of the flood of information that's coming in, you're, you're seeing it through the, through the eyes of your friends. OK. That's great. Um, and so, so you said that the three things launched in the next month, um, Orca High Five and MySpace, are all going to be integrating these types of things. How can people, if they're interested in writing an application using Open Social, what, what, what do they need to do? Well, Google Open Social, and that will take you to the, to the, right. the right place. There's um, a large um, developer community that's already established around this. There's a, discussions are made in this sample code and APIs. Um, depending on which, whether you want, to, there's, there's two halves to this. You can either write an application that runs on other people's sites, uh -huh. or if you already have a large user base, you can become a con uh, container yourself and have other people's applications run, in, run in, inside your site. So you know, each, each, each of the three groups gets benefits from this. Uh -huh. So the container site gets a load of new applications they don't have right. to write. The application developer doesn't have to deal with registration code and gathering users, and the users get applications in the sites they're already at without having to go somewhere else. So their, si their sites they're using suddenly get new features. And um, you know, as far as if anybody has as far as like privacy co concerns, more about the users who are saying, okay, well, I don't know how much I want these applications or these services to necessarily know about me. What type of controls are, are built into that? So that's under the control of the individual site. What you okay. don't want to do is surprise the users of a site with, by sharing information so that each, they won't expect. So each site that incorporates the code has their own controls over right. what the users Right, so the application okay. will, doesn't have to worry about that. The application will ask the question, who is the user and who are their friends? And they'll right. get the information that the site and the user between them want to give to them. Okay. So there's a, there's, a, there's a policy barrier there as well as an API barrier. Okay, so there's a policy and an API barrier. And that's actually, I think, pretty important because you know I can see people being worried about that. But if you understand from the get-go 
this is all under the, the heading of what site I'm using. Right. And that this is basically just, as you're saying, kind of this layer, this API that's just facilitating between all these groups. And that makes a lot of easier. Right. And the, the other thing is we have this, this split in the API between get and request. Okay. So you can say, get me information. It'll give you what it has. Um, if it doesn't give you the piece you want, you can say, request the information. Um, and that means that the container can then um, either say, no, you can't have it, or yes, I, you know, I'm allowed to give you that. Or it can put up um, a dialogue to the user and, and let you say, this site wants to know your birthday because it's trying to construct your horoscope. And you can say, okay, that's fair enough. Or if it says, you know, this application wants to know your mother's maiden name and your birthday, and you know, uh, <laughs> it's like, you say, okay, no. you know, hang on a second. So you, you, can, you can put that in, in place there. So um, you, the, the sites, so the sites that are already fully public, where the information is already published, the application would probably get that directly because they can right. read it already. But for sites that, are, that have varying degrees of privacy on the information, they can preserve those, those privacy barriers for the, for the contained applications, but without harassing the user with dialogues all the time. Or just you know, forcing you to reveal everything up front. Okay. So there's some, there's some granularity there that's been designed in. And one, one of the things that we did with Open Social was look at the, all the different social networking sites and other possible containers and looked at what they had in common and that that we brought into the core so that you expect um, you know we started out just with um, name and photo and um, ID but we added a lot of other fields that we found many of the sites had like favorite books favorite movies um, I'm a smoker was one we found several sites had so you can in each case that stuff standardized but there's some stuff that's different between sites um, some sites will let you see um, the friends, the friends of the person looking at the page, right. as opposed to the person whose page it is. Um, some won't. Some of them, they'll always be showing. You know, the, the viewer and the owner of the page will be the same person. So there are ways you can ask about those those properties of the sites, or you can ask what size am I drawing into. Um, so rather than hard coding. Am I running on Hi5? I should do this. Am I running on MySpace? Should I do this? You can say, give me the information about the environment I'm running in. Let me know if I can see the view of friends. Let me know what space I have to draw in. And you can adapt your application that way. So that means that um, it gives you the ability to run your application in sites you've never seen because you're writing to an API. And that's the value of an API is that when you get that stuff right, um, two companies interoperate without knowing each other exists. Um, and that's particularly valuable in social networking sites because they grow by friendship and by accretion. So right. people share um, the site with, with their friends, the information moves through that way. Um, and you know, they, they end up finding users in countries that, you know, that they weren't expecting. Every social networking site will tell you the stories about, you know, Hawk have got users in Brazil and India, i have got users in Portugal and, and South America, um, and, and, and you know, um, friends that got users in, in Malaysia and Singapore that they weren't originally targeting, but um, somehow it took off there through friendship networks and group. Um, so this lets the app developer have that same experience of getting users all over the world in places they didn't know were there, because these, these different social networks have different strengths, different communities operating within them. So it, it, it saves having to bring everyone to you and lets your app go out to them. That's great.